With this video, I have taken this box that I found at Michael's and gave it a twist with something within the box itself. So I have this box here, this small tiny little box that's green and it's black on the inside. It's so hard to get the thing open, so I'm not going to bother to open it, but that box that you guys saw earlier. I have an idea for it. And the colors that I painted on that box kind of remind me of something... Hmm, what if I put an alligator in it that magically appeared out of nowhere? Let's do that, shall we? If you don't know them by now, they have a YouTube channel called Snake Discovery, where they educate people about snakes and other reptiles out there. Mainly snakes. They also have a very popular alligator named Rex, who live with them. If you don't know who she is and why she's so popular, stick around and find out. Good girl, Rex! But before we get into Rex, the alligator, not the actual dinosaur, here's the box here that I'll be customizing. Also, there's an item inside the box. One moment, please. Now that all the items have been removed to a different box, it's finally time to get work on this creation. So it was around this time that I decided that I wanted to fill the bottom with clay. So I went ahead and added tin foil inside the box before I added polymer clay in it. And yes, I said polymer clay, not air dry clay or plastic sculpt, polymer clay. But I created the base of Forex first before adding the clay inside the box. Now time for the polymer clay. And I added the crappy type of polymer clay inside first. Hate this softer polymer clay. It's way too soft and it cracked whenever you keep placing the clay inside the oven. But this was just a base coat, so I'm not too worried about it. And before I placed the box in the oven, and before people tell me what a horrible idea that is, I went ahead and added the clay to the base of Rex before sending both of them into the oven. Now before people start telling me that I shouldn't put the box inside the oven, I looked up that I could put some woods in the oven, and I stood around the oven to keep an eye on it. So nothing went wrong. But yeah, uh, do some research before you actually place like something in the oven. Also, the paint is non-toxic that I use. So also, if you're going to be putting something like that in the oven, make sure the paint is non-toxic as well. Anyways, now that both the base borax and the box are out of the oven, it's time to add another layer of polymer clay to the base. A much stronger polymer clay this time around, not that soft one. And I started sculpting in the detail on the back. I was looking at references of Rex on my phone to make sure it gets close as possible to her. It's not going to be 100% accurate to her, or 100% accurate to an alligator at least. But I tried my best. So I sculpted Rex into three, well technically four stages. The first stage was the base. I sculpted the base first, then the next stage I started the basic of Rex's head. But I also worked on her tail as well at the same time. I originally wanted her to be in this position, but later on the position changed. Not intentionally, but it happened. So I sculpted her whole tail like this, then I turned back to her head and continued sculpting that. Now sculpting this head is a bit uh, strange. Because the top part of the jaw is crooked to this very day. It was a bit on the right side of the sculpture, and I didn't notice it till after it big. So there wasn't anything I could do after to fix it. I tried, but there was nothing I could have done. And yes, this is my first attempt at making the tongue. It will be very different later on. Now it's time for the fourth stage of the whole process, the neck. I had to attach the head to the body somehow, so I needed to give her a neck. And this was a bit of a struggle too. The first attempt was too skinny, and it was also falling apart rather quickly before I was able to bake it. So I did the second attempt, and it did try to fall apart, but not as badly as the first. And it's it hold a shape for, for the most part, and it was not skinny like the first one, so I like this one way better. Now that the head is attached to the body, this is where the polymer clay ended, and air dry clay started, because I got tired of the clay cracking on me. So I started using air dry clay. Fun fact, well, not so fun fact, this sculpture is made with five different type of clay. Yes, five different type of clay. First it was super sculpty, then I used medium sculpty for the next part. Then I used epoxy sculpt for some area because um, epoxy sculpt is a lot stronger and also I was using it for another project that I was doing. And the last two are two different type of air dry clay. Polymer air dry clay and DAS air dry clay. This was a lot of work. But guys, and I'm a lazy person so this is way too much. Anyway, I decided to give this gal just a small sandy down. Not like it did much, but it did something, I guess. Once the sandy was quickly done, it was time for, you guess it, more sculpting because I still wasn't done with this piece. Knew I should have made it smaller. It was at this point I just sculpted in detail on Rex. A lot of detail. Even using the sculpt to close up the cracks on her neck and a few other areas. 
but mainly the neck because the neck was breaking. I can see why the neck was breaking. The head is way too heavy, so I can see why she's in the new position later on. But knowing that epoxy sculpt is a lot stronger than polymer clay or any type of clay that I know, I went with that. I added the eyelid on top of the head. Too bad I didn't add a second eyelid. Or wait, do alligator have three eyelids or just two? The tail was a bit of a problem to deal with, not because of the detail I needed to add on, that was easy. But because I decided to give her tail a loopy loop like this, it was actually really hard for me to add the detail onto her tail because of the position that I gave her tail in. So before I, I do anything else with the sculptor, I decided to fit the sculpture into the box and well, the position had changed for Rex, at least she won't be looking like a chicken for some reason. But no seriously, she kinda looked like a chicken early on. After adding the last detail on her side, it was time to work on her legs. Yes, she need her legs. That way, Rexy can showcase to everyone that she is better than everyone. And also get a lot of treats. Need more Rex video. Don't really see her much on the channel anymore. The sculpting is finally done! Wait a minute. Well, just on the leg. Where are the rest of the sculpting? I actually did a lot of the sculpture off camera because, well, it's a lot of sculpting. I already recorded way too much sculpting in this video. So, it's it just pretty much time for me to work on something else. Speaking of which, I'm trying to break a hole through the clay inside the box. And the reason behind this is, well, while I was making this, I've forgotten that about Rex's past till I watched one of Snake's Discovery video about Rex. And remember that for the first part of Rex's life, she lived inside a box from her previous home. And she was very stunted, and her top jaw had this weird looking shape to it. And since I was too far into this project to turn back now... So, to make myself feel better, I decided to call this box a magic box. See? Magic box! And this magic box is able to bring whatever the heck it wants through this hole here. Look, I'm trying, guy. That's all I got. I don't know if it came out like that. I really miss those pliers. I still don't know where they are. Hopefully they're okay. Speaking of boxes, let's move on to this toy snake that I found at Dollar General. I don't know what type of snake species this toy was supposed to represent here. Kind of looked like a green tree python to me. Back to the snake, I need to change something about this toy snake. What, you thought I wasn't going to destroy a toy in that video? No, this is a toy slash doll customization channel, not a sculpting channel. And the only thing I will be doing to the snake is cutting a tongue off. Don't demonetize me. Hey, this is a toy snake, not a real snake. And I also need to open its mouth a little bit because I want to add a wire inside it. I wanted the snake to have a really long tongue, not that flimsy tongue it came with. So after the small adjustment, I went ahead and started gluing the snake but on, well, around the box. I did want it to do more with the snake, like give it spikes, wings, pretty cool looking dragon tail. But I wanted to make a dragon snake like I did with my very first thrift store episode. Also this artwork here. Go check it out in my Instagram link down in the description below. But I did it. I hold myself back on this and only sculpt it in the tongue. Which I made it too fat. Also the tip of the tongue kept breaking off. I'm sad. I really wanted to make a dragon snake. But enough of that. Time for me to paint this box. Well, almost. I need to fix the inside of the box and start painting that. I painted the inside of the box with this brown color, well more of a brownish reddish color, and then I started painting a snake. I had planned to turn the snake into phoenix, but I didn't. You'll see why in a moment. Meanwhile, we have to get back to the inside of the box. Time to get to my favorite part of the painting, dry brushing, which is the only thing I'm good at. And I really love how this turned out. Don't get too attached to this though, you won't be able to see it much much later. Once all the dry brushing was done, I started painting the black in the area where I needed to be black and painting in the green where the green needed to be. However, I ended up finishing the box off camera so here's a recap of what I did. I just ended up giving the snake red eyes and red tongue because I'm basic like that and I gave it some random bull python marking on it. So I glossed the bottom with glossy varnish and I used matte varnish on everything else. So that is my recap. Here's Rex. So I um, thought I had hit recorded at the beginning of a painting. However, I found out that the camera wasn't recording through this painting process, and I quickly hit recorded. So, here we are. She kind of reminded me of that Zilla puppet from the late 90s that my brother used to have. This part was really fun, and I had a lot of fun painting Rex. 
I had a reference open on my phone just to make sure that she looked good. So much fun! And even when the later part comes in with the rest of the painting. So I added this yellow color to her stomach and the area that needed. I even added some pink to it as well. But I did not use wash to the sculpture. All of it was done with dry brushing. Also spray paint. Then I created a green gray color to dry brush the color on her. But as I was painting her, well, her finger fell off her left hand, and I needed to glue them back on, which was really annoying. So, to avoid this from happening again, I decided to pull out the box that I have, you know, created, well, not created, painted on, and place it inside. It made sure to make her sturdy and make sure she wasn't moving while I painted her, after gluing her finger back on. I went back to painting. After gluing her finger back on, I went back to painting. Okay, now it's time to address the elephant in the room. I know she's not green. She looks more like a darker brown in her photos than green, but I feel like that if I had left her a brown color, it wouldn't look right on her. Also, painting her green made her look even more cuter for some reason. I dry brushed some bright green on to highlight a few areas in her. Then I painted her eyes white. I left the eyes alone for a while before I started her mouth. I didn't dry brush this card, I just mixed some colors together and even painted the teeth white, should have painted her nails white as well, but I left them brown. While I was waiting for the mouth to dry, I went ahead and painted her eyeball black, but as I was doing so, the, my camera decided to fall forward. And after fixing that, I gave her eyes some white shine. I went ahead and painted on her stripes, her baby stripes that she still have on her, which made her even more cuter. Oh my gosh, she looks so cute. You have no idea how much I'm gushing over this. She is so adorable. And with that, she's finally done. We can't continue with this. I made them change it off camera. I added resin. I added something else onto it. So yeah, she's gonna look very different from like um you know her previous final shot. So now let's get to the actual final result. Redoing this outro because things have really changed. So I went back before the final you know, cut and added resin in the box. It's my first time doing resin pour and I don't know if I did any good. I added way too much blue ink in it because um, the ink exploded in my hands. I didn't record it, but trust me, it exploded everywhere! It was my first pour and I learned a few things from this pour. Hoping to work with resin in the future. Also, I found um, the Snake Discovery logo on the internet and just created a sticker using the, the said logo. Snake Discovery, please don't sue me. I only use the logo for fan art. That's it. That's all. And that was pretty much it. Anyways, this took forever to do and I pretty much hated myself for doing this. I'm mainly talking about the sculpting part. That part I really hated because of my sculpting skill. And probably most people have already clicked off my video because I'm talking too much for this outro. I need to find a way to send it to them without it getting destroyed. 
But I'm really happy that this is finally done. So much for watching and consider subscribing. I'll catch you, dragons, next week. Bye, dragons!